Hi everyone, Jeremy from the Custom Geek here, and I want to show you a little widget I made on uh, an intervalometer, a term that escaped me on Saturday evening during Google Show and Tell. Um, so if you turn this guy on here, um, you could see that uh, it's a time lapse photo mechanism, and I'm going to go over the hardware. Um, this is an Altoids case that it's in. I just dremeled a hole in the top so the LCD could poke through, and then uh, some holes in the side for LEDs, and then on this side for LEDs and a jumper. So I'm going to take this out of the case and uh, you can see there's a lipo hide under there and this is just the case for it so we'll put that over here and I'm going to walk you through the hardware real quick. Um, first we have uh, an RGB LCD 16 by 2 uh, sold by Adafruit, um, really good LCD and uh, on the side here we have an IR LED uh, there's another IR LED here this is what actually triggers the camera um, there's a two-pin jumper for a manual control here. Uh, there's a power switch. Uh, we have our contrast adjustment for the LCD. Um, we have two indicator LEDs, uh, an orange and a white over here. And we have uh, basically down, up, or decrease, increase, uh, menu, and start and stop. Uh, there's also an FTDI header here uh, for dumping new firmware and for charging the LiPo. Uh, buried really tightly inside there is a max 1555 chip for charging the lipo uh, that works really well because then you can keep this in its case and just plug in a cable on the top here and you can plug a um, FTDI basic or um, an FTDI friend or uh, an FTDI cable or if you could just make a custom three pin header with uh, ground and five volts that'll also work. Um, there's also a manual trigger button right here um, and that's just about it for hardware. Uh, there's an LED right down there buried to indicate charging off for the Max 1555 chip. So uh, that wraps it up for the hardware and uh, let's get to the actual operation of the device. Um, on standby screen here you can see that we have uh, the DEL is delay so there's a two second delay uh, which you can manually increase or decrease so if we can go uh, we can go up or down with that of course I'm going to go through all that, and then uh, the elapsed time, how long the device is running, and the number of shots taken by the device, and right now we're in set mode. Now if I put this to run, uh, what it'll do is it'll fire a shot every two seconds. Actually, this increases to about uh, three seconds here. So if, if what, we, uh, what we do is we do this, you can see it's IR, and my camera's over there taking pictures. I'm going to leave it on for reference here. And so um, that's just a simple timer. Now if you're not sure of what delay you need, because when doing time lapse, you're you're going for a finish length of a movie, and then you want to capture so much time. And so, what I did is I put in a menu in this. So if you hit this button here, uh, this is the finish length of the final video. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to select a length. So if we select uh, a five second video, and to keep this simple, we'll do uh, this is a time lapse. The total minute you want to capture, total time you want to capture. So if we want to capture five minutes for the video and compress that into five seconds like the previous menu. Um, the frames per second, this is the frames per second of the final video. So if we shoot this at uh, 15 frames a second, um, we can go ahead and say okay. Um, this is an option for the LCD backlight. Um, RGB backlights are very fun, so we have an LCD backlight on with pulse, which means it'll be blue and it'll pulse red using PWM when the trigger fires. Um, if you go to the next option, we can pulse only and turn the uh, solid blue backlight off, um, the pulse red, I'm sorry, and then uh, LCD backlight on without pulse, just to, uh, this on solid, kind of like you see here, or you can turn it off to go in total darkness. So we'll leave this uh, on with a pulse. Uh, we'll go to our next option, which is manual and automatic. Now this option here is set to manual, and the first time you change one of the values of uh, your total time or elapsed time or the, or the frames per second, this changes to automatic by itself. Automatically, I guess. So uh, if you switch this to manual, it'll reset everything to zero so you can start over. Um, uh, if not, just advance and go ahead. And then the LED feedback has options for these two guys right here. Uh, and first we have the orange with trigger. Uh, as you saw a little bit earlier, the orange light comes on when it triggers. Uh, if we scroll through these, we have a white pulse trigger, kind of like the red uh, on the LCD, uh, the, the 
white will kind of pulse uh, when it's triggered and so again it gives you a little feel of what's going on there. Um, we have the orange on solid so you can just have it on solid when you know that it's time lapsing so if you have a really long delay between time lapse like only uh, if you have a 60 second delay between shots you can have this on solid so you want to look over and know that it's on you can uh, you can see that. Uh, we have a white on solid in case you like white better than orange and we have a white pulse with the orange on solid and last not not but not least, we have the white on solid with an orange trigger. Or you can go into total darkness and have no LED feedback. So let's keep this on orange uh, with trigger. So um, that brings us here. Now you can see we have an elapsed time of 300 seconds. That's five minutes, what we selected. It automatically cal uh, calculates the delay at four seconds and shots fired to zero. Uh, it's on set mode right now. So if we put this into run, uh, what will happen is this will go ahead and then this will start firing off shots uh, every four seconds. It'll keep track of the number of total of shots and then at the end of this time it'll stop automatically and the screen will turn red indicating that it's finished. Alright guys, you can notice here uh, through the magic of time lapse that I edited out a bunch of this so you didn't have to watch it all and if you look closely you can see the screen um, pulse red. Uh, it kind of goes to like a magenta I don't know how well it's shown up in the video. It's pretty. I know the flash is kind of killer here too, but um, uh, the screen pulses like that when uh, a shot is fired here. So you can see that um, it's done. The screen has turned red. It says done. It's taken 75 shots uh, with a four-second delay, and your lap time elapsed time is down to zero. At this point, if we go um, in our menu and see all our settings are still there, um, we can go in into the next menu, which is uh, manual, automatic, and then put that to manual, and then when we go back here, uh, everything is set. Now that's still, uh, the delay is still there, and our total is still there. When we start this um, and, and reset it, it'll go back to zero. And then if we go through our menu again, you can see that everything is, is zeroed out. I want to go over manual real quick. Uh, there's a little button here, which obviously you can put anywhere, and uh, if you just push that, it'll just fire the camera. It says uh, manual trigger, say cheese. So um, this little pin header on the back here, if you plug this guy in, and what I have is uh, this foot switch from Adafruit, which is a really handy device because uh, I can take pictures. My camera is over here on a tripod. I'll show a picture of that in the video. And uh, this guy goes down on the floor, and then when you step on this thing, uh, it'll automatically take, a, automatically take a picture. So uh, really handy for setting up tutorials if you want to photograph yourself not trying to juggle a camera and a project and uh, get decent pictures. You can just have this on the ground, uh, set this down, and then when you're ready, just go ahead and hit the, the button, and it'll take your picture. So uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks very much. Hi, guys. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is that um, this project is in an Altoids 10, which we all know is metal, which we all know conducts electricity. And uh, this circuit board I have here, uh, you can see I use 30-gauge magnet wire on the back of this thing. And um, it's kind of exposed. The LiPo keeps it away. The LiPo being silver is, is actually plastic. It's non-conductive. I checked very thoroughly. Um, but even still, I wanted a little bit more protection than that. And um, if you can see uh, what looks like a cap, a ceramic cap, right in front of the switch here, uh, that's actually a resettable fuse, uh, a PTC. And what that does is basically it's a kind of a resistor. Um, and if it if you put more than 250 milliamps through it, what it does is the resistance goes really high. Uh, it gets warm, but it causes uh, an interrupt in the circuit. So basically, it's kind of like a little bit of a circuit protection. So th if the battery ever, you know, something went drastically wrong and it really shorts out, lipos can be very dangerous. You have to treat them with a lot of respect. Uh, this would open up the circuit and save uh, meltdown, basically. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that and also a reminder that the Eagle schematic files and the code are up on the website if you want to grab them. Thanks very much. Alright guys, here's this guy set up on my bench here. Uh, the camera's set up and I'm working on my project here and I want to point to this cool logo here. So I do this and then that's it.